Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm on the Scoop Studio at Apex 2019. I'm joined by Michael Skinner from US Tech and Eric Miskell from EMS Now. Gentlemen, thanks for stopping by. It's been a, it's been an intriguing week, a week of Industry 4.0, of Industry 3.0, and maybe even looking at Industry 5.0. Um, what have you seen? What has um, what has excited you on the show floor this week? I think one of the biggest things is things that we've been seeing over the last couple of years are where the, especially the capital equipment vendors, uh, like Fuji, Panasonic, they come out with machines all the time, but they're reaching like fundamental limits of accuracy and repeatability and CPH. And I was just speaking with uh, Faisal at Panasonic and he was saying how even for such a large company, one of the biggest, the, the best ways they can add value is through software right now. Nice. So here at the show, I think one of the biggest things is, is software. Yeah, and, and Eric, that kind of ties into what's going on upstairs with CFX. It's about connecting those machines, building that foundation, and then building building the layer of data on top of it. Is that, is that what you're hearing from people? Yeah, I'm hearing to? that, but and I was going to go in a different direction too, which was that I'm also hearing continued optimism, right? So everybody's aware of, I mean, we've, we have companies, Co Young, making these amazing sales over a, a machine a day last year, right? I mean, phenomenal sales. And you ask them, you know, how's it going to continue? You know, there's some worries about the economy. <laughs> People are still very optimistic about this, even the questions about the tariffs and the impact that that's having. I mean, people say, yeah, we'll see, but that can end like that, right? And, yeah. and the environment changes. So there's not that much concern uh, economically, uh, it seems like, for the for the, at least the next year or so. Yeah, and then those tariff things are interesting. You know, whilst they, whilst they might challenge and slow down some um, capital equipment decisions in some places, certainly in Mexico, they're seeing an increase in demand of business moving from China to there. So I guess it's different challenges. Do you think it's blind optimism or just... Uh, you know, we're at a trade show, so people people tend everybody's to be marketing people, are, and they're happier, aren't they? Everybody's happy, and you know, all pro forma financials are positive, right? That's just the nature of it. But uh, no, I think that you know these are smart people, right? And if, you know, you get a chance to push them a bit. I don't think it's false optimism, but the reality is, people don't know. But we've been on a damn good run, right? Yeah. And especially in this country, and that and that continues to get a little. Everybody says, you know, that the basic economy is good. It's just all the noise around it that's yeah. disturbing, right? So yeah. if we could shut down the volume on the noise a bit and just focus on the fundamentals, it's pretty damn good what's going on, especially here in this country. And Mexico certainly yeah. benefits from that. Yeah. And Michael, one of the other things, every time I, I visit the booth of one company, they've got the machine of another company and they're connecting it there. There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of collaboration and they seem to people seem to have gone past this idea of thinking I can own all this ecosystem and got to the stage of saying okay it's too big we need to collaborate. I think it's a great point because the market in the US is much different than a place like China where here if you go you want to buy something from Fuji they have all the partnerships with all these other you know types of equipment and software that unites it and that really allows people in the US to to pick only their pain points in their line and optimize their line specifically. Mm. And because the majority of, of business here in the US is you know, high mix and low volume, it's really important to these you know, smaller EMS companies that they can have every available option to cut their cost. Whereas in China, these guys just want to buy a whole line and they don't want to like, they don't want to mess around with finding an MES system and that can communicate with four or five different vendors along you know, a particular line. So I think the collaboration here is really important for this country. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting when you look at that. I was talking to um, Tom from, from Fuji yesterday, and we were talking about the whole industry 4.0 trends, and he sees it as a, as a catalyst for bringing business back to North America. And a lot of the reshoring we've seen has been to lower cost environments, but if automation has an impact that reduces the element of cost, it potentially would bring, bring back stuff to North America. Yeah, and that's and you hear that, right? They're talking about that and saying that the, the, they believe it's happening. As we were talking the other day, you know, there's a concern with do we have the talent to to do that type of, of manufacturing here still? And that's a theme. The more you kind of talk to people, the more you're hearing that as well. Say, yeah, that's real. But maybe automation fixes that. Maybe we really don't need that. Because if you look at them, I was just down at the ASM booth, right, where they have the whole the console there where you manage it from, and it sends alerts when something's going. So. How you know? So you need one really smart person, I guess, and and some minions to run around and yeah. not to belittle the you know the, the effort there, but you know to, to go around and fix the problems as they're popping up. Yeah, so it changes the skill mix, but a little bit of a hiccup there in terms of 
news this week that I saw, I think, on CNN. I, I just saw a headline go through yesterday that Foxconn might not be doing what they were planning to do in Wisconsin. I'm not, not quite sure what's going on there. I think that would kind of disturb people. I don't know. It's a, it, it's a tough one. Um, so in terms of in terms of other trends, what are, what have you seen here? In anything anything kind of really revolutionary in terms of of equipment or processes? I think one very exciting piece of equipment is uh, upstairs in the other hall. There's a, a company up there, uh, Crucial Machine. They have a they've they've developed a laser selective soldering system, mm -hmm. and the beam width is interesting because it's variable from down hundreds of microns up to 80 by 80 millimeters, really? and they can they can cook a pad at up to 250 degrees Celsius in like six seconds. Wow. And they're using that in conjunction with some 3D printing technology to be able to, to prototype little parts that you wouldn't be able to reflow and be able to solder them very accurately. Yeah. So that's one kind of exciting yeah. piece. And I think that combination of robotics and additive technology is really interesting. I think additive is going to disrupt this industry at some point and I'm yeah. waiting to to come to an apex and see a few additive manufacturers, I don't think we're a long way away. I think one other point too that's interesting is that as these technologies get more advanced it, with automation and robotics and assembly becomes less difficult, like you're mentioning, you know, it takes less skilled workers with automation to, to reach maybe, you know, the same level of productivity that you could have with a few skilled people. Yeah. Um, we're, I think we're going to see assembly move more toward back-end semiconductor, like TSMC. These guys are just going to start doing them themselves. Yeah. They don't need to, you know, they, they already have the wafers. They can dice them up, they can package them, and then what's to stop them from some getting some pick-and-place machines and, and yeah. building them, assembling the boards themselves? Yeah, but that, I, what's interesting there is we are, we are definitely seeing that line blurring between, between back-end semiconductor and SMT. And it's, as you say, it's an opportunity for back-end semiconductor to get into SMT. But conversely, it's an opportunity for SMT to get into back-end semi. What it does mean is more players come into the market and maybe some different connectivity standards and some other stuff that's going to kind of blur the uh, blur the environment. So yeah, no, I, uh, you can, it, it'll be interesting to track, right, yeah. and to see because Lord knows we need more standards, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's what we could do with another another half a dozen uh, standards yeah, just, out there. Yeah. Guys, thanks very much for stopping by. Always a pleasure to chat. It, it has been a vibrant show. It has been. It has been busy and people are looking forward positively, so that's a good thing. Thanks for your time and we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.